okay so uh, let's get started on how to use piping so I've got two panels here and one is a curved piece and one is a straight piece well look I've got two pairs of scissors Great, okay, and I'm using just a regular pen, but you will want to use something that isn't going to, um, sorry, my, my stool squeaking. <laughs> You're gonna to want to use something that's not gonna be seen, okay. It sounded like some kind of giraffe or something was in the sewing room then. Um, now, I'm using the pre-made piping for this just because I'm very lazy and just because it's ready-made. Now, if you want to trim a little bit of the cord out of the end, you can do. Um, I'm going to show you how to go around a straight edge and how to go around a curve with this. Now this stretches pretty well and you might be able to get away with using it just as is. Don't forget to pre-steam it okay, so that any shrinking is done already. And to apply piping, regardless of whether you're using homemade or one that you've bought or um, you know any kind of trim or anything, you are going to want to measure the flange I'm not sure whether I do like that word or not I can't think what else, other word it would be so that would be from where the basting stitches are let me see if I can show you a bit closer maybe if I take that okay so from where the basting stitches are to the edge of the tape and to me that looks like a quarter inch not sure if you can see that clearly enough so the flange is a quarter inch now that is an eighth of an inch smaller than the seam allowance on my bag so what i'm going to need to do is draw a line at a quarter of an inch from the edge of my piece of my fabric so whatever it is so if the um if your piece is an eighth of an inch then you need to add a quarter of an inch so draw a line a quarter of an inch for example now I'm going to pull that close enough so that I can see what I'm doing and I'm just lining up my ruler at an eighth of an inch on the edge of the fabric and draw a line we'll kind of ignore the fact that I've obviously cut this fabric slightly wonky because my eighth of an inch doesn't match match up to the lines there and then for the curved section I'm also going to mark an eighth of an inch so I'm just gonna line up the eighth of an inch mark around the curve and make a few small marks and then afterwards I'll do a sort of join the dots type thing all the way around the curve okay so I've got my dots around the curve and I just join them up and I'm going to treat this line as though it were the edge of my fabric if that makes sense but I want to use the correct uh, correct seam allowance for my pattern so I need to make sure that the edge of the piping or the cord of the piping falls into the right place Otherwise, you'll see basting stitches. Right, so we'll stick with that for the minute. And if we need to do a bit more, we can. And again, very lazy. I'm going to use my double-sided basting tape. And I'll show you how to do this on the straight edge and the curve. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to do it on most things. Um, if you're piping something like a cushion with straight edges, what I tend to do is go straight up to the edge and then kind of tug it a bit so that it carries on as, as neat, neatly as it can within the seam allowance. And then when you have finished sewing those, don't clip your corners. Try not to get really sharp corners and then it'll give you a nice little rounded edge um, at the corners when you're finished. Right, so we're going to apply some double-sided tape and we're going to apply it inside the line. So I'm applying it one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric and as you come to the corner it's helpful just to do some little tiny bits just to help you curve round 
If you haven't got double sided basting tape you can pin it or you can clip it I just find that this way it stops it from moving um, you can of course baste by hand heard people still do that uh, there we go I know basting tape isn't the cheapest product in the world is it but um, I just find it's invaluable for things like this right okay so we're ready to add our piping now don't panic this is no scarier than adding a zip although if you're scared of zips still don't panic <laughs> so i'll start at this top corner because it's a nice straight edge and i'm just going to peel this first bit of backing paper off the tape the tape is still on there and then get your pre-shrunk piping tape and line the edge of the flange up with that line that you've drawn at one eighth of an inch okay and just smooth it down so it's not pulling too much okay so that is how you pipe on a straight edge now once you've applied this with basting tape you're going to use your adjustable zipper foot again to sew fairly close let's say as close as you can get to the cord without on top of the cord without sewing on top of the corner and i'll show you on this bit before we go around the curve okay so let's move you over slightly so that you can see kind of what i'm doing so we're going to pop that underneath and i can see the basting stitches there and I'm going to try and sew directly on top of the basting stitches now fortunately you can't see the basting stitches so if I go a bit wonky or I go wrong you just have to assume that I've done it right okay <laughs> so I'm sewing down the whole length as close as I can and I'll stop there because I don't want to go into our curve right so I've basted that into place along the edge and it's an eighth of an inch in from the edge and all you can see on the wrong side is my basting stitches so now when you come to say you're doing a pocket top of a pocket so you would do it uh, baste your piping into place get your second half of your pocket and I'll just fold it over for illustration so pretend that's the second piece of my pocket And what you can do is just clip that into place. You don't need basting tape for this one. So make sure that your raw edges are really well lined up with your piece that's been piped. Okay, so this is just for straight edges at the moment. And then when you come to sew, sew from this side and sew directly on top of your basting stitches. And then you know that everything is going to be hidden in your seam. So you're going to sew using your regular uh, stitch length and your regular seam allowance. And in theory, when you're following the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, because that's, that's the one I've used, you should hit directly on top of those stitches. But make sure to favour hitting directly on top of those stitches if you can. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's how you would pipe the top of a, a pocket or um, a cushion cover or something, just a straight edge. And I've got both layers there. So once you sew those two together, don't be tempted to sew from this side and feel your way. That's when it gets a bit messy and a bit um, a bit difficult to sew. And, and that's when it, um, you know, you think, oh my goodness, piping is hard, but it's not. Just turn it over and set it from this side make life easy okay so that's around a straight edge let's talk about going around a curve now so it's very very similar now check how stretchy your bias tape is because it may be that you can just stretch that around that corner without making any adjustments at all you can just gently manipulate it into place much like asking my husband to do the washing up <laughs> and that's how you would go it may be that you might need to cut a few little snips into the seam allowance 
of the piping to encourage it to go around the seam allowance uh, to go around the curve sorry in which case all you do is just cut a few little snips and you don't want them to be too deep because you don't want this piping to fray over time so you tiny little snips and then as you stretch that out around the corner as you can see that will just spread out to match the curve now this particular piping stretches really well and it doesn't need the clips but um, some of them might need the, the clips into the corner for example the one that we used with the fusible that's really sturdy with that fusible in it so you would need to clip that really probably although who's to say might be perfect so to go around the curve again line it up against the edge of the line that you've drawn that's it okay and just sort of finger press that into place there and you can see that this wants to pop up a little bit and that's okay you don't want a floopy piece of piping you want a piece of piping that is going to be slightly taut because then as you um make your bag and you sew it, that's going to sit proud out of the seam. So then when we come to base that into place, again, we're going to use our adjustable zip foot and just sew all the way around. And I'm only going to go around halfway if I remember, and then we can talk about how to cross over or finish that off. I might forget. If I forget, we'll, pre we'll pretend that's the plan. Right, so <laughs> I'll start in approximately the same sort of place and again I'm on a basting stitch still and I'm starting with my needle down just go as slow around here as you need to and move the fabric as you need to and these basting stitches I'm trying not to hit on the cord just go in as close as I can and I'm trying to aim for the basting stitches that are already in the fabric um, of the pre-made piping. Now if you've made your own piping and your stitches are a little bit further away then no problem just try and get your foot the adjustable zip foot right up next to the cord to make sure that you're sewing as close as you can and that's why really an adjustable zip foot adjustable zip slash piping foot is necessary for this to get a really good finish okay so i've gone part way and um and just do a little reverse so it doesn't unravel while we're doing our next step okay so there is my piping basted on to my fabric and you kind of get a little glimpse of how that's going to look i think that looks really good if I do say so myself. <laughs> so then again, if you are sewing something flat and you want to add the second layer, you add the second layer and line up all the edges and clip it into place. Hi. Um, yeah, you can, you can pipe with leather and cork fabrics that don't stretch on the bias such as um, cork or leather or faux leather you would um, you would cut it on the straight because there's no point in cutting it on the bias but you would always need to clip into any curves okay so you would need to clip into the seam allowance for a curve if you're using a fabric that doesn't have any stretch in it okay so you would clip that into place your second layer and then to sew it the final sewing at uh, the final seam sorry final sewing sounds like some kind of sci-fi doesn't it you would turn it over so that you um, can sew directly on your basting stitches so you would sew from this side and you would sew directly on those stitches all the way around and that would ensure that when you turned that through right sides out you would just see the piping cord you wouldn't see any of the flange or any of the basting stitches you would just see the cord and it would sit lovely between the two layers of fabric okay
Catherine, you can use pinking shears. Um, you just don't usually need a lot of um, clipping into the seam allowance. So you might find that pinking shears are just a little bit more than you need. Um, whereas a few sort of dizzy little snips would be um, more effective maybe. So if you want to finish a piece off, so say you're going all the way around, um, all the way around this piece, you would have this end go off the edge like that at an angle. And again, use your basting tape or your basting into place. And then you would have your second piece, your other end, and that would go off at an angle like that. So that you'd have a little cross at the bottom. Can you see that? And this piece would just carry on around. Now, if your cord is particularly chunky, you would probably want to cut it out of the piping around about there so you're not sewing through it. But if it's diddy like this one, you can probably get away with just crossing them over. And you just sew directly over that cross. So keep your seam allowance throughout all the way over. And then when you turn it through, you will see a tiny little join like that in between the seam allowance. But it's very subtle, not too bad at all. Okay, so that's piping around a straight edge and a curved edge. Is everybody happy with that? Uh, there we go, okay. So we're gonna talk finally about how to add piping to a bag with a gusset. And this would be a bag which has a front panel and a back panel like this, and a gusset that goes around the bag. We'll just pretend this is the right length, okay? Now, I've never, ever, ever seen a pattern that does it my way, and it just doesn't make sense to me. So I've popped this in the um, Complete Bag Making Masterclass book. Um, so if you read it in there, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm sure somebody else does do it like this, but I haven't found anybody else to do it like this. And I don't know if that's because I'm odd or um, it's not supposed to be done like this or, um, you know, anything like that. But I'll tell you my way. And if it makes sense, then do it my way. And if it doesn't make sense, do it the way you know. OK, so if you are making a bag where you've got a front panel, back panel and a gusset, most patterns call for you to apply the piping to the main panels and you can ease that around the curves and make sure it's all nice and neat which is great because you know your piping is neat however then when you come to construct the bag and sew it all together you usually want to sew with the gusset side up do you not because that helps to reduce puckers but now you can't see where your basting stitches are on the gusset can you so if you were going to see where the basting stitches are you'd have to sew with the gusset side down and chances are you would get a few puckers around those corners i find it almost impossible to sew a bag with a gusset with the gusset side down so to combat that what i would suggest you do is apply your piping to the gusset like this and you would apply it in the same way, so one eighth of an inch away if your, you know, if your flange is smaller than your seam allowance. In fact, let me just do that quickly and then I can show you exactly what it is. So I'm just going to draw my line at one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Can I just say, we really appreciate you watching my lives and um, I hope you find them useful and please do continue to ask if there's anything specific that you want us to cover.
Okay, so I've done my line at one eighth of an inch, added my double sided tape, and I'm going to add my piping in exactly the same way. And this is really easy because you haven't got to go around any curves. On the gusset, you are literally just piping a straight piece. Okay, so to me, this makes sense. I am dyslexic and slightly odd, so I understand this. <laughs> Not for everybody. Okay, so then I just baste it into place. Oh, I might need to move you slightly so I can see what I'm doing. Be helpful, wouldn't it? And that is so much easier than trying to sew around a curve with piping, isn't it? Okay, and I've basted that into place. So now we're going to pin our gusset onto our main panel. Now this is what makes sense to me. So you've got your main panel here and we'll start from this side which hasn't got any piping attached and with the gusset side down now obviously you would have foam stabilizer or a fusible fleece or something attached to this um, if you're making a bag. Right, so I'm pinning this gusset on and I'm treating this gusset panel as though I would any gusset. I'm ignoring completely that it's got piping on. And when I get to the corner, same as I do with a regular corner, snip into that and you're going to snip through both layers there of the gusset and the piping. Oh, Elizabeth, I tell you what, the carpet bag looks fab with piping around the outside and you can use this method for doing the gusset um, if you're adding pipe into it. They've probably clipped too far now but um, just going to manipulate that around the corner. Now this is quite a tight corner. There are a lot of bags which are a lot easier to um, add a gusset around a curve but this one is a little bit tight. I was trying to eke out my fabric a bit. So just sort of manipulate it the best you can. All the way around the curve. And we'll pretend that that's a gusset that fits. Okay. Now when we sew this into place, we'll be able to sew with the gusset side up and sew directly on those basting stitches all the way around without having to worry about whether we've gone close enough to the cord. So, oh, actually my cord finishes there, so. Start right there. So I'll just do a little piece to show you. Okay, oh, I've unthreaded my needle. I would love to show you how fancy the needle threader is on this machine, but unfortunately, I don't know my own strength and I broke it within about a day of having it. <laughs> User error. <laughs> right, can I thread a needle? Yes. Woohoo. Okay. So now to attach the gusset to the main panel. Again, I'm using my adjustable foot. Uh, same machine I have, Catherine, I've got a Janome HD9. It is not an industrial. It was classed as a semi-industrial um, in that it's portable and you don't have to have a um, tank of oil. You do have to oil it every day. Um, it's the HD9, which means heavy duty. It's brilliant. So I'm taking my stitch length back down to a regular stitch length. So 
So as you can see, when I'm sewing with my cusset on top, I can pull all of these extra creases away from the stitch line. Whereas if I'm sewing with the gusset on the bottom, I can't pull all of those away. And the chance of me getting a pucker in there is quite high. Okay, so start with your needle down again. And I'm trying to sew directly on top of my basting stitches. And there's no, no rush at all. You can sew as slowly as you want. And can you see there's quite a lot of creases and puckers there that I'm able to hold out of the way because I'm sewing with a gusset on top. Now if a pattern doesn't have this in it, then there's nothing to stop you changing it. Okay, it's your bag. If you want to sew with a gusset on top or pipe in this way, then you can. It's your bag. Do what makes, makes it easier for you. If you find it easier to attach the piping to the flat panels, then do that. There's no real rules in bag making. There's no bag police, fortunately. <laughs> okay, so I'm sewing directly on top of the stitches. Which is, of course, made easier by sewing live in front of an audience. <laughs> Right, so I've sewn my gusset to my main panel with the gusset on top. So there's no puckers or creases in my seam line there, as you can see. Pretty impressed about doing that live, so that's good. And when you turn it right sides out then, you can see that that piping is attached pretty well there. All the way around the curve, you can't see my basting stitches. The seam allowance was right. You could maybe see my base instead. We'll, we'll ignore that bit. <laughs> this is why you use a complementary thread. If you can see any bits of basting stitch, just go back in and just take in the seam a little bit more. You can, when you're sewing it, of course, don't forget, line up the edge of the fabric with the seam allowance on your machine. Okay, on the foot plate. But as you can see, that was fairly painless. I've attached piping around a gusset without having to get any puckers in there at all. No puckers in my gusset. It was, um, I wouldn't say it was a pleasure because, you know, it's kind of stressful sewing live, but it made it really easy to apply that piping. So does that all make sense or are there any questions? Um, now, we haven't talked about about zips, I'll just do zips very, 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 very quickly using zips as piping. If anybody's got any questions, please pop them up now and I'll try and answer them. Okay, so for using zips as piping, you would want to take your zip apart. I'm using continuous zip tape because that's what I've got, but you can use a regular zip and just cut the metal end off and pull it apart. Now you've got two pieces of piping here. And you can see on the zip, you've got one side with the teeth and one side, which is the back. And the teeth would be the right side. So when you attach this onto your, um, onto your panel, pop the teeth right sides down. So again, same as we do for piping, measure the flange of the zip. So this would be measuring the zip tape. Okay, so that is actually three eighths of an inch. Perfect. This is number three zip. Okay, so a number five zip, you are um, you may need to trim the zip tape down. Now that's fine if you're only doing a small area. If you're doing a large area, you may find that you want to add a little bit of fray check along the edge if you're um, if you're trimming the zip tape down especially if you're using cheaper zips, which um, might fray unnecessarily. So that flange is actually, or that zip tape is actually my exact seam allowance. So to apply this one, all I need to do is add a bit of tape to the edge. And I promise this is the last thing um, I'll talk about. And we can all go and get some tea or um, have a barbecue. It's hot enough, isn't it? We're just 
uh, add a bit of basting tape there. So I'm doing zip teeth down, okay? So zip teeth are here. And I'm putting those right sides down onto my fabric, lining up the raw edge. Okay, so that's the raw edge of the zip and the zip teeth are this side facing into the bag. And then again with my adjustable foot. I only have two feet that I really use on the machine, adjustable foot and my walking foot. And I don't really need my walking foot on this machine, it's just a bit of a comfort blanket. <laughs> so again, same as you do for your regular piping. Base that into place. And we'll pretend that I've used the basting stitch. Okay, and then when you add your second panel, to manipulate this round, again, line up the edge and clip that or pin that into place. Yeah, Janice, it depends on the bag you're making. So if you're making a large bag, you probably want something a bit chunkier, maybe a three eighths of an inch um, or a half an inch. When you look at your piping cord, generally that's pretty much how it's going to look once it's piped. The fabric doesn't add that much bulk to it. So for example, um, this piping cord, you can look and think, yeah, that would be nice on any size bag, really, a small bag or a large bag. Something like this, which is actually rope, you probably would only want to use it on a larger bag um, as a statement. Okay, and um, as I said before, using trim, you use this method exactly the same for trim. You would just treat the trim as the piping cord and this bit as the flange. And again, measure the flange, measure the seam allowance and draw a line however far in you need to in order to apply that. Okay, so then to attach my second panel, which we're pretending is a separate panel, I would just turn it over and sew directly on my basting stitches again. Okay, the key to getting a really good, neat finish, I think, is being able to see exactly what you're doing. And this is the only way I've come across that you can do that. So again, I'm sewing directly on my basting stitch or a close, as close as I can. quite like three millimeter cords for piping. It's a really um, quite petite and it's just a really subtle, the silver that I've been using, that's um, I think three millimeter and it's just a really nice little accent to a bag. Okay, so um, I've just sewn my zip in as piping and then when I turn my panel right sides out, and then press it and top stitch it. I've got my zip teeth as a nice feature on the top there as piping. And that's great, you can do that on anything with these zip, zip, um, zip piping. The only thing is when you turn it right sides out and press it, make sure you're not touching the teeth if they're nylon teeth. Okay. Uh, if you're using trim and the flounder is a bit small, would you consider adding a bit extra width? You can do, um, I haven't tended to, because I think once you are sewing on there, you'll sew as close to the edge as you can again. You could add a bit of extra fabric, but sewing the bit of extra fabric is gonna be just as difficult as sewing the trim on. So um, you might be better just sewing the trim on. Save yourself a job. Although I probably would use double-sided tape to make it easier. So once you've sewn your pipe in, if you're doing it on top of a pocket, you want to turn them right sides out and give it a nice press and then just top stitch along the top, however close you feel comfortable. 
and that's only purely and simply to hold all the layers into place. It's not like on a zip where you're um, in danger of catching the layers. If you have um, added piping to a gusset, you don't need to worry about pressing that. Just as long as you push that right, you know, that right sides out quite well. And if you have gone around a corner, I do always advise, regardless of how many clippings you've put into the gusset, trim that with a pinking shears or add some extra clips into it just to make sure that that corner sits nice and uh, nice and neat when you turn it out. Okay, does that make sense? Are there any more questions? Don't forget if you've got any questions, you can always ask them in the group and I'll um, answer in addition to what we've done on the video here. I hope you'll use piping. I hope you'll use maybe some trim or some zips. Um, just give it a go and see where you are. I think most of you who have um, been on retreat or who have listened to me before will have already an adjustable zip foot um, for your machine. See if you can use a universal one. My machine, unfortunately, I needed to buy the specific one and this is a specific Singer one. But if you can use a generic one, universal one, then don't waste your money. Um, if you can get away with it, do use it, but don't use it if it's gonna damage your machine because that's even more expensive. Um, so some double-sided tape, an adjustable piping foot, and just have a bit of faith in yourself. Be brave. You can do it. I know you can. And if you've got any other questions that you'd like us to cover in a video or any other tips and tricks that you'd like, please do give us a shout. Don't forget, we love to see your makes. Please do tag us on your social media if you have made something and you'd like us to feature it. Really appreciate it. And thank you for watching, and we really appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye.